huge Gina Carter fan just because I've known her for such a long time and it was like junior high when we started listening to her. And she's just great. It's great meeting her. I've never met a big star before. So I mean the fans are always great and um, friendly and receptive and you know it's a fun place to come. The weather's awesome this time of year so it's perfect. The big shows are cool, usually with a couple of artists, you know, so it's not just you by yourself and that's fun. And uh, the smaller clubs are a fun place to try out new material and maybe some acoustic things and just show a little bit more of who you are as an artist to be more intimate, you know, with the audience and stuff like that. So clubs are fun too. And I'm happy to be I spend a couple songs kind of leveling out and talking to the audience and the more I can talk to them and feel like, you know, we're communicating, I think it, it always turns out good. Everybody asks, you know, where do you get your ideas? And of course, I think they're looking for some magic bullet, I guess, that we all must have. But, you know, I get my ideas because I'm reading all the time and I'm watching TV and listening to the radio all the time. What I've got to do with my cartoon is I have about seven seconds from the time you start looking at it to put on a little morality play, if you will. You know, I have to set the scene, you got to look at all the characters, you got to be able to read the dialogue, you got to get the message in the end, because you're only going to look at that cartoon for seven to ten seconds and then move on to the sports page. It's nice if you can be funny, but in an editorial cartoon, that isn't a requirement. The requirement is you comment on what's going on in the news and what's your take on it. I do the cartoon and I pretty much hang it out there and say, Here's the way I feel, go ahead and take your shots. You know, if you disagree with me, fine. But that's what I'm supposed to do. You know, as I tell people, my job is to annoy everybody at least once a week. You know, that's, that's pretty good. I'm just like any other cartoonist. Every so often we pinch ourselves and we go, wow, you know, I'm drawing cartoons and people give me money and this is so much fun. I definitely love coming back here during the summertime and run with the players. I think that's probably the, the best conditioning for me. And I think it's good for them, too, to see somebody like me out there working with them because I think it pushes them a little bit harder to see a guy my age running with these young guys because I've got geez, a lot of years difference between us. And they push me, and I think I push them by coming back and working out with these guys. Every time I come to Nebraska driving home, I see the sign, Nebraska, the good life, and it definitely is. Uh, Michigan's got some great things. They have a great countryside. I get to see a lot of that playing charity basketball games. And the city has uh, got a lot of things going on, but you know what? I talk to a lot of people, and they say, what's going on in Nebraska? And I say, well, you know, there's things that are going on. There's not a lot, and that's the way I like it. That's why I come back here. It's inside the 10, inside the 5, and it's Corey Schlesinger. Touchdown! Touchdown! The 94 bowl game was definitely a good game for me. I think uh, Tom Osborne called two great plays that game that uh, really uh, uh, helped me to get recognized, I guess, because Tommy Frazier was playing Lawrence Phillips. We had a great offensive line, and uh, it's great to... Uh, to come back and have people still tell me that they watched that, that game today still. 
you know, I got plans and ideas, and so it's not going to be uh, a major shock because I'm really blessed that I got to go this far to play 10 years of football and hopefully continue to play a couple more years after that. Hello, hey scenes. How you doing on a Monday evening? You've got another edition of the Cafe 80s. My name is Matt Connor, and my 80s buddy Day Ray is here with me. How you doing over there, Day Ray? I'm melting, Matt. Why? I'm melting. Why are you melting? It's, oh, it's so oh, hot it's out there. It's typically July hot weather. Mm, Get I used to it. Stand You're such it. a big baby. All right, what do you have for us? On we the both grew up in the 80s, and so it just naturally uh, came about the mid 90s, and all of a sudden the nostalgia for the 80s started to kind of come back. In probably about 83, I really started to get into current music and listening to the radio as much as I could and associate every memory from, the, from my life with a song from the 80s. From November of 1982, I know there's something going on by Frida, and you can really hear Phil Collins on the, on the drums, don't you sure think? Sure you can. I, I love that song. Produce the song right? We like to have a show where we have a lot of banter between me and my wife, and we just kind of play music. We just say, we just pretend we're having a party. I remember you, Day Ray. Well, I remember you, Matt. You're well, sitting across the table from well, me. Good. Let's get her out here on <laughs> the Cafe 80s. We're hoping that to, from this point forward, we can take the show to a broader audience, that we can expand our listening base beyond just the Hastings community and include people all over the Midwest and hopefully even the country. The Cafe 80s. Hasta luego. Okay, take care and we'll see you later. Bye bye. is great because you get to spend so much time talking football with the people that make the football headlines in the Big 12. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have a real response to that. I think the highlights of the uh, of, of media days are just the fact that we get to hear 12 different stories instead of just one. I mean, we hear so much about Nebraska football back home, but uh, there are 11 other teams in what is the best conference in the country. Certainly, you want to start your season with a victory. With the head coach of the Cowboys, Les Miles, in Kansas City. This has been a great day, it, and uh, I started the press conference talking about, you know, what a great opportunity it is to come down here to Kansas City and, uh, and to really get familiarized with the, the media of the Big 12 Conference. One of the greatest things about Big 12 Media Days are the insightful comments you get from people. Uh, no. Um, I, I, <laughs> no, I, I, no. <laughs> you say you know let's let's get the film rolling let's let's get the season going let's see what they got
women were crazy. You wouldn't imagine how crazy those women are. Everybody's cheering, everybody's clapping, everybody's yelling, go Big Red. The tunnel walk by far was one of the coolest events I've ever, I've ever experienced. It was really fun. We would like to welcome you to Coach Callahan's first football 101 for women. I can't believe that we have over 1,050 women here today. Phenomenal. If they took a poll, I bet they'd find there's just as many women involved and excited about football as there are men. You can't fire a can out of a canoe, guy. Oh, ladies, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm new to Nebraska, new to the Huskers, um, so I had to learn all about it to be happy at home. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to come because I watch football a lot, but I really don't understand a lot of the plays and a lot of the signals and stuff, so I wanted to learn more about it. She continues, and I, I can't go anywhere because, you know, we can't get off the field. And uh, she, she finally ends her little comments to me like, if you were my husband, I'd poison your coffee. And I looked right at her, I said, ma'am, in all due respect, if you were my wife, I'd drink it. Well, I enjoy auctioneering because I, I think that I like the the speed of it and the action that goes on in within an auction. I had twelve and a half and thirteen dollar bet bet thirteen dollar bet bet sold at twelve and a half. Put them on number thirty-seven. This is my full-time job. This is I'm doing what I love and loving what I do. It's the only job I know. I'd jump out of bed and go to work. Got our kid of it in time. Get on time. I'm right here. It ain't all down time. And I sold his way. Eight dollars right here. Number uh, 157. My theory is if, if a person walks into a room within the first two seconds, they ought to be know where you're at and what and what you're selling. Everything is numbers and everything in between is filler words. Five dollar here now ten. Here now is your filler word. Five dollar here down ten. And it's, and it's just a mix of, of filler words and numbers, and you, you keep increasing the numbers as the people bid. Here down 10, here 15, here down 20, here down 5, thinking 30, here down 5, here down 40, and they got 35 way in the back of the blue, down 40, and 40 is out of it, and 40 all done. Here. It takes a lot of practice and knowing the value of merchandise and just mostly practice on your chant and clarity, and you have to be able to work with people really well. You sure your wife's going to make you sleep on the couch tonight? 